Uh, okay, sorry, I, I must be louder, okay. And uh, because I, um, firstly, I, I want to introduce myself. My name is Bao Shui Wang. I'm from Hunan Normal University in China. And I th I'm very pleased to be here. I'm very, I feel it's very interesting to be here because, you know, for a long time, I think uh, your country is, uh, the feeling is very strange, you know, because sometimes I think it's, uh, you are, uh, your country is a very close neighbor a neighbor country to China. But at the same time, I don't understand this neighbor because I don't understand so much about your culture and uh, how, as a people, you think and uh, how about your living. I don't, know, I don't know too much about it. So I'm happy to be here. I hope I, I can make the best use of this chance to understand your culture and your life here. Uh, you understand? Okay. And you are all in law school, right? You are students in law school, right? Are you a law school students? So, uh, what do you think under this topic, the international judicial cooperation? Do you understand, do you know something about the international judicial cooperation? Anybody have some idea about it? Um, oh, um, I, I think it's not so, I, I usually in my course, I always ask my students, always have a dialogue with my, uh, with my students. Because I think sometimes you don't know the legal conception, it doesn't matter. But you understand this word, so you must have come some conception in your mind. This is the beginning of our study. So answer the question is uh, very important. So, I want to know, maybe, uh, may I ask you? You understand this word, the International Judicial Cooperation? Uh, and, uh, what? Mm. Uh, what? Uh, what? 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 юридического сотрудничества, да, какие-то идеи, какие-то понимания есть у вас? Профессор Ван говорит, что всегда ведет диалог со своими студентами, да, и неважно, какой точки зрения вы, да, придерживаетесь с точки зрения вот какого-то правового, да, что вообще вы имеете в виду, что вы представляете под этим понятием? Okay. Is some idea? Okay, okay. No ideas. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, to continue, okay. Um, today, I, I, under this topic, I want to give you an overview of my, of my lecture, the introduction um, and the regulation and practice problems so far of the international cooperation in, in between China and Russia, and the future uh, development of the international judicial cooperation. Um, but to tell the truth, uh, I don't know what's your, how about your, your opinion? Usually, uh, I can still remember that when I was a student, I don't like lecture, because I think lecture is boring. And I think uh, the most important thing in the lecture is answering questions. Only in this part, I think I can find some problem and, and can find the help from, from professors. So I hope I can also use this chance for the communication between us. So I will just give a very brief introduction of the, my topic on this topic. And I, I want to give more time for you to ask questions. I, I'd like to ask, answer your question and share my experience about Chinese law. So, um, that's all, okay? Okay. Сейчас будет достаточно очень краткое такое изложение лекции, потому что профессор считает, что он сам никогда не любил лекции, и вообще лекции это все очень скучно. И он предпочитает больше живое общение, да, поэтому он очень надеется, что у вас к концу появятся какие-то вопросы, возможно, и он хотел бы их услышать, постараться на них ответить и поделиться с вами своим опытом, рассказать немного о китайском праве, о вообще том, как стоит дело с юриспруденцией в Китае. 
uh, you must uh, translate every word? I don't think so, just uh, okay. the introduction. Okay. Um, the first thing I want to introduce is that why we, why we need this um, the international cooperation. Um, I think um, the first thing is that what is the international cooperation and judicial cooperation and why we need it. And the, the most important thing for this topic is uh, globalization and uh, under uh, this basis, the one belt, one road strategy. strategy. Um, because I think uh, with the globalization, we have two problems in two aspects, the international private law and international criminal law. As to the first part, the international private law, I mean, uh, because of the, the development of the international commerce and investment, that means in every country we have more and more immigrants, such as in Russia. Uh, you can see every year there are, they have more and more Chinese enterprise come here. They have uh, established factory, corporation, uh, company, and they want to have business here. And if the Chinese company stay here for 10 years or 20 years, maybe they will marry here. They will stay here and have a family here. And so we have international pri uh, private law problem. That is, uh, that means. Uh, we will have some family with, uh, with different country. So this is the so-called the international um, dispute, the so-called dispute, civil dispute with uh, foreign elements. And we have dispute with foreign uh, factors. If uh, we can imagine, uh, you need some time? Пожалуйста, чтобы извините на схему, да, здесь очень кратко так представлена вообще э, суть всего этого, да, то есть зачем вообще нужно это международное сотрудничество, да, в области э, права, да, в области юриспруденции. Э, все дело в глобализации, да, вы видите красный э, наверху, это глобализация, да, в рамках программы «Один пояс, один путь». И, в общем-то, здесь идет подразделение на право, надеюсь, я ничего не совру, на право гражданское и право уголовное. То есть имеется в виду, что есть какие-то некоторые аспекты, да, которые связаны с иммиграцией, с тем, что сейчас в рамках глобализации да, огромное количество людей постоянно переезжает из страны в страну. Это и международные компании, это и просто люди, которые уезжают да, с целью работать или просто проживать в другой стране. И вот эти все вопросы, да, споры какие-то, которые в правовом аспекте касаются иностранцев, Они могут быть разного характера, поэтому очень важно взаимодействовать в этом плане да, и находить какие-то вот точки соприкосновения между правовыми системами разных государств. Oh, um, if I speak English, maybe some of you can, don't understand, right? May I, uh, do may I speak too quick? Shall I Может быть, слow down? Или погромче. Oder spreche ich Deutsch? Sprechen Sie Deutsch? Möchte ich von Niemetzki vom Präsident lektüren? Ja, alle sprechen Deutsch, oder? It's okay, they say. English or Deutsch? Yeah, English. English, okay. Just a bit louder, maybe. Okay, uh, so I'm sorry, uh, I'm too small. <laughs> so, um, because in the international private law, when we deal with a dispute, I mean a case in a court with foreign elements, we have some special problems, such as um, the first one is allocation of jurisdiction. You understand the word jurisdiction? That means we have different courts. Every court has his authority over something. For instance, in this country, the, the, your court has jurisdiction over these things. And in China, the Chinese courts has jurisdiction over those things. But the problem is that if there is an international marriage, such as a Chinese husband and a Kazan wife, they have problem in their family. So we have a problem of jurisdiction. Which court has a jurisdiction over this dispute? That means the countries must sit down and discuss how to allocate their jurisdiction over such international dispute. This is the first important thing in the international judicial cooperation. And uh, the second thing is legal service. Let's imagine that. Uh, for instance, some people, um, some people have a lawsuit against you in China. 
because a business dispute, such as he purchased some products from your factory and the products is some problem, some is a defect, right? So he want to have a lawsuit against you in China. And the Chinese court must give you some document. The problem is that how the Chinese court may send the document to you. May he use Fed Express or Chinese Post directly send the document to you in Russia? It's a second problem, the legal service. That means how a court sends document to the parties in another country. This is so-called international legal service. And evidence collection. In a case in China, maybe the court need some evidence in Russia. So he must think over. May the Chinese court send a Chinese judge in Russia to collect the evidence. Do you think it's OK? A foreign judge come to your country and collect evidence, such as, hey, Mr. Mm, would you please, would you please tell me something about that case? I want to write down, have a document about what you see, and uh, could you please give me an expert testament? That means the judge, the foreign judge, they want to collect evidence in your country. Your government will refuse it because your government think if a foreign judge may collect evidence in your country, it will injure his authority. So the country must sit down again to discuss this problem. How to collect evidence from each other? They cannot send the judge directly to another country. They must find some international assistance to collect evidence from another country. And the last but not at the least, they recognize and enforce of a foreign judgment. That means if a Chinese court made a judgment against you, maybe a Chinese court said you divorced, you and your, your wife divorced, and you have this judgment from China, you return Russia. The problem is that the Russia legal system, I mean the authority, uh, all the legal authorities or agency, will you recognize this Chinese judgment? This is a problem. This is a so-called international recognize and enforce of judgment made by foreign courts. You understand? Everybody understand? OK. We don't need translator, right? Do you need translation? Good, thank you. Thank you very much. So that means we can see with the development of a globalization, we have more dispute with foreign elements. So we have this problem, such as allocation of jurisdiction. And that's, a, a not, that's one of the most important reasons why we need international judicial cooperation. We need international judicial cooperation to solve this problem. And on the other hand, we must see there is another important factor is international criminal law. You know, you know the criminal law? You must learn criminal law, right? And you know the, the, the bad people, the bad men, are clever, they're never, right? They are more and more clever because they use model technology. They use model technology to break through the country boundary. For instance, the, the, the cash lottery, the, the drug criminals, the, the terrorism, all the criminal matters, now they can across the country's boundary from one country to another country. That means the international, in the international criminal law, every country faces new challenge because of the development of model technology. So in this, this is another important thing that we need international judicial cooperation, such as a criminal um, have, something, have bad, something bad thing in your country and flee to China. Now, your government want to take this person return to Russia, right? So it's 
Do you think it's possible that the Russia send some policemen directly to China to catch these people? Do you think it's okay? Or we can, we can imagine that. Um, American citizen, he, said he has some criminal in his country, and now he's in Russia, in your country. Do you think it's okay that the, the Trump sent some American agency to your country to catch these people on your street? Do you think it's okay? Do you think it's okay? Now, of course, you're a policeman, may catch people on the street. But do you think it's okay that a foreign policeman catch people on your street? You, you think it's strange, right? You think it's strange, you think it's uncomfortable, right? Yes, but it's okay if our government, our mm -hmm. policemen, will help American policemen uh, catch these people. Yeah, uh, that means there must be agreement yes. between the countries yes. that you give the permission for the American uh, policeman to come here to catch that people, right? The, the, the American policeman cannot, without any permission, directly come here and catch some people on the street. It's not comfortable. So that's another important reason that we need international cooperation. So uh, this is just the circumstances between China and Russia. So we have a treaty. Uh, we have a treaty on civil and criminal judicial assistance. We have this treaty in 1992. Um, and this, this is, uh, uh, in this treaty, we they regulate three important things. The general provision, civil judicial assistance, and criminal judi uh, justice assistance. As to the general part, um, they have they regulated something very important for the international judicial cooperation between the two countries. Uh, the first one is most important, it's free. The international judicial cooperation is free. It's very important, right? Otherwise, it will be very expensive. Even in your country, if you want to begin a lawsuit, if you want to ask the policeman, ask the judge to do something, it's always expensive, right? But the international judicial cooperation is free, at least between the two countries. Um, furthermore, the, the two countries, um, they have their central authorities. These central authorities doesn't mean it's president or it's prime minister, it's not. That this central authorities means central authority for the enforcement of this treaty. These are so-called central authorities. That means in this treaty, in the framework of this treaty, if you want to ask the legal assistance from another country, you need to ask to send your application to the central authority. For instance, if a Chinese court need help from Russia, and he must send his application to the Chinese central authority, and the Chinese central authority transfer this application to the Russia Central Authority. And the Russia Central Authority send this request to another agency such as a court or a judicial bureau or something like that to have answer. And if the Russia court have the answer, they send the answer to the Russia Central Agency Authority and this authority will transfer the answer to China central authority. It sounds very complicated, right? But they cannot directly communicate with each other. I mean the Chinese court and the Russia court. They cannot communicate. They must communicate with each other through the central authorities so far. Maybe in the future, uh, the courts also may also have some connection with the uh, internet, such as uh, with Twitter, with Facebook, they may communicate with each other. I mean, the countries, the, the courts, the judges from different countries. And um, the third thing I want to um, refer is another important principle is protection of witness and expert. Um, that means in a lawsuit in China, the, China, the Chinese court 
need a witness from Russia. So they sent this request to Russia. And uh, the Russian government find these people. They said, yes, Mr. Blah, blah, I don't know what's your name, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Um, would you please go to China? Of course, the Chinese government will pay the money, pay the journey uh, cost, and you will be there to participate a lawsuit as witness. You understand? As witness, you, you see something, right? You must uh, give your word to the court. The court needs you as witness. So uh, you go to China because, because of that law case as witness. And after you enter China, the Chinese policeman arrested you. They told you, two years ago, you were in China and uh, have uh, a problem, have a criminal. So this time you entered China again, we got you. It's prohibited in this treaty because we must protect witness and expert. The witness and expert cannot be arrested because the criminal before this judicial cooperation. You understand? You understand? It's, it's too easy for you, right? Do you, think, do you think it's too difficult or it's easy or it's okay? It's easy. That's good. And may I ask you, that boy, do you, know, uh, how, do you understand the exchange of legal information? Yeah, uh, so because you think it's easy, so I want to ask you. How do you understand this word, exchange, legal information? How do you understand it? Okay, that's why. Uh, but I, I want to say the legal information exchange is very important because um, because in China I'm a uh, I'm a law professor in the university, but at the same time I'm a lawyer uh, in my free time, and in the legal practice in China. The legal information exchange with foreign countries is very, very essential. It's very important. I'll give you an example. That is, for instance, um, you are a Russian businessman, and I'm a Chinese businessman. We have a contract. And in this contract, we regulate that this contract is, um, is be governed under the the Russia law, Russia contract law. You understand? That means you have an agreement about the applicable law. That means uh, Russia law will be applicable in this contract. This contract is governed by your country's law. And now you have a problem in China. Uh, you and me, you will have a problem in China. So I have a lawsuit in China, in Chinese court against you. And in this lawsuit, the judge, the Chinese judge, he must understand how about the regulation in the Russia law. You understand? Because we have agreed that our contract is governed by Russia law. So if this lawsuit happened in China, in China, the Chinese judge must find out how the Russia law regulate this problem, right? But the Russia, the Chinese judge, just like me, they don't speak Russia. So he has big problem, right? He has big problem to understand how the Russia law regulate about this problem. So that's why we need exchange of legal information. Because the court, the judge, they don't understand f so many foreign language. So they need the help from the central authority to help him find out how the, how the um, the foreign countries legal regulation. You understand so far? You need translation? Okay, good. And um, another thing uh, in the general part is no document also authentication. You know the word authentication? Authentication, you know, you know the word? Do you ever have some problem about uh, authentication? Um, for instance, mm, if you want to study in China, you need a visa, right? You need a visa. For the application of visa, you need so many documents.
prepare so many documents, right? You need the documents to, uh, usually you need, you need the documents to be authenticated. That means you send your documents to the, uh, to the diplom diplomatic department, they will give you a temper on it. They said, ah, oh, yes, it's true. It's authentic, right? Uh, it's, it's also very expensive, right? Uh, authentic, uh, you need money to finish the authentication. But in this treaty, they said the document between China and Russia, they, they don't need to be authenticated. It's just okay. Yeah, that, that means the Chinese court issue a judgment. This judgment can, we can directly use here in Russia. We don't need authentication. This is general part of this treaty. And uh, now we turn to the second part is uh, cooperation in civil matters. Um, as, as I explained right now, um, as to this part, the most important thing is uh, service of judicial documents. That, that means the, the, the courts or uh, a tribunal, they send judicial documents to each other through central authorities. And they may in, require inquiries or they ask the parties, witness, and experts from each other. Uh, um, they can ask, they can also ask for instance, a Russia court may ask the Chinese court to help them to give some investigation and recognize and enforce of the judgment. It's cooperation in civil matters. Uh, is there some problem so far? You understand everything? And in criminal matters, um, the court may ask each other, may ask help from each other. For instance, the question of the witness, the victims, expert, and criminals, um, identification, investigation, and so on. Yeah, you can read, you can read them all. And transfer of evidence and you got it money. You know the word you got it money? You got money. You know the word um, corruption. You know the word corruption? Uh, the word corruption. Corruption. Listen to it. They, if, if some people uh, have some corruption, they, they have the ill gotten money. And uh, uh, so far in China, we have this problem that is, uh, there are many uh, bad men, they, they have corruption evidence, they have corruption criminals, they have money, and they flee to other country. And uh, the, the problem for us is just how to get the people returned to China. And uh, this is also the cooperation in criminal matters. And service of criminal proceeding documents. Um, in form of results of criminal proceedings. This is cooperation in, cooperation in criminal matters. Uh, of course, you have my paper in your language, you read it, you understand everything. And this is, uh, um, prob uh, of course, the, the treaty is in 1992, and it's uh, a little outmoded. It's not so, uh, it's not up Dated. So there are some problems in the practice in the enforcement of this treaty, um, such as there are not some specific cooperation mechanism, um, especially in the region areas, uh, in, the, in the boundary areas, when, the, uh, when there is a need for both sides to have some special mechanism, there is no legal basis for them to do that and um, there's no domestic regulation in detail. Uh, that means, um, just now I mentioned that a, a Chinese court, they have problem um, to find out how the Russian law regulate about the problem, so they just want to ask the Russian court to give them answer. But in China, we have no re regulation about this proceedings. 
That means they judge, they don't, un they don't understand very well how they can begin the proceeding to find the answer from Russia courts. And um, the, um, that, that's just because the third part is the, the proceeding in the central authorities is not clear. That's why they cannot use this mechanism to, um, to have the answer they need. And this is a problem. Uh, but I think uh, the problems and the future of this uh, treaty, I, I don't think it's uh, very important because it's just my personal opinion. I, so I think the most thing for, for me is, uh, and I think the most important thing for me is uh, um, to answer your questions. I'm very um, happy to have your questions about Chinese law. So I think the, the treaty itself is just, uh, it's just a treaty. It's not so important. Um, but I just, I, I, I really want to, uh, I really want to know um, in which problems you are interested in. And I would like to share my personal experience with you. You need? Oh, please. I'm very happy. I have, I have first a question from you. Maybe I'll ask you something, but I don't uh, completely understand which uh, side, which country decided who will judge the person which committed with criminal. Mm -hmm. a criminal person and what kind of judge, judging will be? Chinese judge or Russian? Who will decide? Who will decide? Uh, you mean under this treaty? So, oh, okay. I want to, uh, firstly, I want to see that um, if you have question, I, I hope you have question from every, uh, about everything, not limited in this treaty. But secondly, as as to your questions, I think um, the, um, the the your question, I think uh, it's late. It depends on in which territory this people is in. Mm -hmm. Who were, was committed with criminal in China, and how we will judge this person? Of course, that depends on which country began this uh, began these proceedings. For instance, the, the Chinese government, the Chinese courts, they think this is a criminal in China, so they caught these people, and they need a witness from Russia. Even so, the Chinese judge will decide the the trial. That's my answer. I hope I answer your question. Please. Uh, branch, uh, branch of Russian uh, companies uh, exist in China. Questions. Uh, beg your pardon. You can speak Russia. We have translator. You can speak Russia. Um, um, uh, he asks uh, if there are some uh, international field, international branches, international companies branches in China. Yeah. Yes. Uh, да, они могут. Uh, is this a question? Да. Yeah. That, that, that was a question. Конечно, да. Безусловно, филиалы иностранных компаний существуют в Китае. Во всех сферах. In every aspects. Yeah. Да. Безусловно. Ну то есть вы имеете в виду филиалы иностранных компаний, да, какие-то корпорации международных? Безусловно, они существуют, конечно, конечно. Вопрос еще один. Существует ли сайт китайского законодательства на английском языке? Uh, he asks, is it possible to find on the internet some uh, aspects about Chinese law in English? Uh, yeah. You can find it. Uh, and Maybe I, you know some websites. Uh, yeah, I know some Chinese websites law. in Chinese law in English because I, I must see that in this aspect, the Chinese government didn't, uh, the, the, the work from Chinese government is not so good mm -hmm. because it's not so complete, comprehensive. But at least you find something. But I don't know whether your law school purchased that database. 
uh, because usually we use a uh, Chinese database, that means the Beida, uh, Peking University's um, that, I mean, name is Lord Cherish. They have this database, they have all the Chinese law in that and uh, in trans English translation. But I don't know whether your law school has purchased this, that or not. But if you need some Chinese law, you can ask me, I'll send you. Professor uh, говорит о том, что, к сожалению, работа вообще по переводу каких-то вот законодательных актов, да, или вообще информация о китайском законодательстве, она на английский язык поставлена не очень хорошо, потому что работа, сами понимаете, достаточно сложная. Но существует база, информационная база, да, которая принадлежит Пекинскому университету, но, к сожалению, эта база закрытая в том плане, что она доступна только другим университетам. То есть, если, допустим, ваш университет, да, юридический факультет, если он имеет доступ к этой базе данных, соответственно, вы можете ею пользоваться. Там довольно большой объем информации именно на английском языке. Но, тем не менее, все-таки отдельные какие-то моменты, они существуют, и если у вас... Ну, у вас нет такие вопросы, можете просто потом подойти, и профессор может вам лично что-то посоветовать. Uh, I want to add something. Nowadays in Chinese, uh, because uh, nowadays in Chinese uh, legal education, technique is very important. Technique, that means firstly, they can use technique to find some jurisprudence. Uh, I mean, precedents, I mean the case, the case mm -hmm. law. Mm -hmm. they, they may find the cases from the Supreme People's Court mm -hmm. uh, to support their argument. And uh, so in China we have so many database, the private company develops them and they can f you can find almost all the judgment from Chinese courts in that database. The database and the technique for that is very important so far today. И он говорит, что вообще в сфере юридического образования в Китае очень важна именно техническая сторона, то есть доступ к информации, он налажен в принципе хорошо. Поэтому, как правило, университеты, юридические школы, они имеют доступ не только к каким-то информационным базам по китайскому праву, да, но в том числе и по международному, то есть у них есть доступ к каким-то данным по международным делам или по судебным прецедентам в других странах, поэтому они в принципе могут со всем этим ознакомиться. Чтобы... Are they in Chinese? All these databases and all this information for Chinese students only in Chinese. Uh, we have different databases. Some database is for Chinese law and Chinese judgments, but we also purchase other countries' databases such as Lexis, such as uh, Big uh, High Online. You, you have this, right? Yeah. And uh, or um, the Big Online in German. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Westlaw. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the Euro. Uh, uh, database we used in China the foreign, for foreign legislation, but we have also various uh, databases for Chinese judgment. Есть разные. По китайскому законодательству они, конечно, в основном на китайском. Но, тем не менее, предоставляется доступ также к международным базам данных западных стран, ну, других азиатских стран, африканских стран, разным странам. То есть и там уже либо на английском, либо также на немецком языке тоже предоставляется. Uh, okay, so he asks if there is a um, kind of a Chinese civil law codex, uh, the, the yeah. book of Chinese law. Uh, civil code, civil code, civil code. Yeah, yeah. this is, a, is the biggest project in Chinese, in China for the law scholars. Now we have general part, general part finished and just effect in this month. From the 1st of October, the general part of the civil code in China is effective. Эта работа сейчас как раз таки ведется. В начале октября была завершена работа по созданию основной части. And now, uh, because in China we, we have no, uh, no uh, uh, complete code, but actually we have uh, delict law, we have contract law, we have marriage law, we have uh, inheritance, inheritance, mm -hmm. I mean, inheritance law, and uh, so on. Now the problem for the scholar is that to collect all the single law regulation together and find if there's some conflict between them, how to il how to eliminate the conflict between the different 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 law and uh, make them together as a code. Да, и сейчас на самом деле самая большая задача для китайских юристов и ученых это собрать воедино все вот эти вот части, поскольку в принципе они по отдельности существуют, да, и вопросы брачного права, вопросы наследования, какие-то вот 
ну, разные аспекты гражданского права, да, но все это не собрано пока что в один такой общий кодекс и не приведено к какому-то общему знаменателю, поскольку э, множество провинций, да, есть и какие-то другие территориальные, территориальные единицы, э, есть у всех свои какие-то особенные аспекты. И поэтому сейчас э, ну, стараются все это вместе как-то вот, э, объединить. Project because you know in China the, the law is very complicated. Why it's complicated? Just because the Supreme Court has has um, has some have so many of uh, various opinion. You understand me? Uh, I don't know the situation in, in your country, but in China, you know, the Supreme Court is very powerful. Usually, the National Congress have the contract law. It's okay. It's contract. It's marriage law. It's okay. It's from National Congress, right? It's okay. It's a law, but the law sometimes is not so comprehensive. So the Supreme Court see. I want to explain this law, so they give their opinions. Sometimes the opinion is longer than the law itself, and this opinion is also effective in the practice. That means in the practice we, we, we may use the law, but we also and we, we, we must consider the opinions from the Supreme Court at the same time. You understand? Yes, the problem is also in the difficulty of this project, the huge one, is that the law is not always very precise and can be used for different reasons, depending on the person's opinion его мнение, от его понимания. В Китае все-таки важным главенствующим органом является Верховный суд, и с его мнением, ну, естественно, нужно считаться. То есть его решение, оно является основным таким и, собственно, полагающим. Но поскольку как бы, все равно в зависимости от определенного судебного решения, да, какого-то судебного прецедента, тоже возникают разные недопонимания и вопросы, и нужно каким-то образом все-таки прислушиваться к решению Верховного суда. То есть соотносить это все между собой. Uh, как, какой из судов uh, по uh, коммерческим спорам лучше? Государственный или уже арбитраж? Если есть какие-то вопросы о коммерческом law, то они отправляют в Суперем Корт или, может быть, другой вид Корт? Повторяю, пожалуйста. Another kind of court. I don't know how to say how to say in English section. Another kind of court. Yes. You have Supreme Court uh -huh. and you have another court. Oh, we have only one Supreme Court. And in every province we have the High Court and in every no, 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 no. Um, uh, uh, what court is better for um, commercial uh, case? Uh, state court or arbitration? Uh, it's, it depends on how much money is related to. Зависит от суммы, на самом деле. Это сумма, это сумма. For instance, I, I introduce something about in, 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 in my city, in my city, right? In my city, we have a high court. High court is, that means the Supreme Court in that province, right? High court in the province. And the middle court in our city, middle court. And the fundamental court. And if the, in the case it's about money, and if the, it's about money, um, 30 million Chinese yuan, 30 million Chinese yuan, you must go to the fundamental court. If you have more, if your case is more than 30 million Chinese yuan, you go to middle court. Mm -hmm. If a case about uh, 100 million Chinese yuan, you go to high court. Ну вот, собственно, он объяснил, то есть э, зависит э, от суммы сделки, да, то есть вот, как, о какой сумме вообще идет речь, насколько вот э, высокий уровень, вот вы, смотря какой торговли вы говорите, да, каких вот так, прецедентах, да, э, то есть э, в каждой система такая, что есть э, некий такой низ, низ, низший уровень суда, э, средний и, соответственно, высший суд над провинцией, то есть есть Верховный суд всей страны, и в каждой провинции, соответственно, тоже есть свой вот, Верховный суд, суд над этой конкретной провинцией. Соответственно, если у вас э, меньше 30 миллионов юаней, это самый низший уровень. А чуть больше – это средний уровень. Если э, 100 миллион? What? 100 миллион. For, for, for the fundamental? Yeah. 30 миллион. Да, 30 миллионов. Uh, 30 миллион. The high one is, uh, you mean the high court? Yeah. Uh, 100 миллион. 100 миллионов юаней. Да, пожалуйста. Oh, sorry, for long waiting. Можно Да. Но при этом эти нормы не существуют в России. То есть это просто пример, чтобы понять. 
So, uh, she asks about the question about the civil law in China. Mm -hmm. Are there any maybe type of cases? Uh, cases. Which, yes, cases in civil law which uh, you have in China, but we don't have the same in Russia. Cases. Yeah. What's that? Uh, the case in civil law which you have in China. Maybe some civil laws in China which we don't have in Russia. Because I don't know the Russian law, so I don't know is there something we missed, uh, you missed? <laughs> Нет, профессор, он, к сожалению, в нашем российском законодательстве не разбирается, поэтому он не может вам привести пример того, что есть, например, в Китае, но отсутствует в нашем праве. А что именно насчет гражданства? Вопрос. Есть, например, смешный прав, считается, и, например, гражданство России, ну, или в Китае, какое гражданство он получает? If a Chinese man married a Russian woman, or a Russian man married a Chinese woman, and they have a child, for example, in Russia, which citizenship he will have? Which, which? Citizenship. Citizenship. Oh, it's a very good question. It uh, depends on. Uh, because I don't know, uh, in, you know, in China, uh, we have the principle use congruinus or something like that. That means if one of the parents have Chinese citizenship, the child has Chinese citizenship. But I don't know how about the circumstances in your country. But so for, for instance, in the USA, they, they have a local principle. That means mm -hmm. the people born there have the American citizenship. So uh, I, I have many friends. They, they have baby in uh, America. And so the problem is very interesting that their children they have American citizenship. But the American government said, your children is now American citizen, but he's still young. So his citizenship may be sleep. Until 18 years, he's adult, he can decide again whether he needs the American citizenship or uh, China's <coughs> citizenship. Then the parents may take the child in China. And the chi in China, they can see this baby now is a Chinese. He can go to school and do everything as other Chinese uh, boy or uh, girls. And uh, when, he, when this baby 18 years old, not 80, 18 years old, she or he can decide by himself. He will have the American city citizenship, definitely, or Chinese. Because in China, we don't confess the double citizenship. If you have American citizenship, you lose the Chinese citizenship automatically. Welcome. Uh, <laughs> какие-то специфичные моменты, может быть, какие-то непонятные, ну, там, не непонятные, а специфичные, как бы, вот, ну, например, для нас специфично то, что а, второго ребенка нельзя выводить, да, в Китае. Mm -hmm. вот также для него специфичные, может быть, какие-то, или, а, может быть, наоборот, которые ему более понравились, или которые бы он хотел, например, увидеть а, в китайском законодательстве. So he asks, uh, have you ever really studied maybe some aspects of Russian law? which seems uh, interesting for you. Because, for example, in Chinese law, we have uh, some things which are, seems very interesting, very specific. For example, uh, recently you didn't be, uh, in China, they only had only one child, for example, yeah. policy. Now, oh, now we have only two. We have another new policy, only two. Yeah, and uh, do you have uh, any maybe interesting cases in Russian law which, for you, are seem really interesting? Uh, a very interesting yes, you, thing in Russia law. Yeah. Which doesn't exist in China. I don't know. I don't know too much about the Russian law. There's a problem <laughs> for me. <laughs> no, Professor Tan, uh, you, uh, but, but, but I can I can introduce you something rec in recent years, some interesting thing in China. Um, the, the yeah, may explain, okay. Uh, professor uh, Dao, yeah, he doesn't have any rights to the Russian government, but he made a small remark, that now in Russia, the second child is officially to be given to the official. But he can tell you about some more specific cases, maybe for Chinese law, if it's interesting. For example, one example. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, because my, my research in China focuses on family law. And in family law, we have in recent years so many interesting cases, such as, um, uh, you know, um, the, um, the, the, the party autonomy in the family. Uh, because usually we think family is a family, right? Family means uh, people understand each other. They don't need a contract. But nowadays, uh, so many young men, they have contract in the family. 
such as um, the, the, you, the, the wife and husband have a contract uh, in their family, they said, uh, if the husband has an affair with another woman, so they must divorce. All the baby is belong to the women, and all the money, all the baby belong to women. The, 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 the husband must go out without anything. Is this contract effective or not? The problem for you. Uh, сам профессор он специализируется на семейном праве в основном, и вот в последнее время, да, таким uh, несколько uh, особым для Китая uh, делом, да, является заключение брачных контрактов, да, то есть когда муж и жена заключают контракт, то согласно этому контракту в случае, если uh, была измена, да, с какой-то стороны, мужчина должен уходить из семьи фактически ни с чем, дети и какая-то вот материальная, да, составляющая имущество остается женщине. И вот насколько будет этот работать, этот контракт, насколько он будет эффективен, потому что его ведь можно оспорить с той или иной стороны. Вот такой вот интересный случай, скажем так. Да, пожалуйста. About the duration as a factor for promotion, international law cooperation. And uh, in this case, how is Turkey and uh, how the project of one view to one road uh, will regulate the problem of illegal migration, Chinese illegal migration, transit migration from China to the European Union, for example, across the Russian Federation territory? What do you think about how? Is your question is that how the Chinese regulate how, how the Chinese law regulate this uh, one well one belt one road problem? Yes, the problem is uh, illegal immigration. Uh, illegal immigration. Ah, um, I, I don't I don't I don't uh, I didn't research so much about it. Illegal immigration. Um, I'm sorry, I don't, know, I don't know too much about it. But I think, uh, um, uh, what do you understand the, the word illegal uh, immigration? That, you mean that the, the, the Chinese immigration in, in Russia? Russia also, and also the transit migration from the China across the territory of Russia to the European Union. Uh, what is the situation Ah, does he mean the immigration, the illegal immigration as a labor force? No, he means uh, in terms of this uh, treaty, in, uh, in terms of uh, international cooperation treaty, for example, mm. how it will regulate this topic of uh, illegal immigration? Ah, uh, but now he mentioned that the immigration from China, from uh, Russia, Russia to... Russia, but the other countries, European countries, mm -hmm. you know, at, at, at all. You mean, the, uh, my opinion? I, I, I'm sorry, I have no personal opinion. I don't research this aspect. I, my research focus on the private law, commercial law, civil law, and so on. That means every law about money. So not so much about the international uh, public relationship. So your question is, uh, uh, I think it's an international public law question. Um, but if you, if you need some material, you can ask me. I will find some Chinese literature, uh, or some literature in English about Chinese circumstances give you. Welcome. Uh, oh, uh, they, 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 they have raised this hand. How Chinese people are related to the tattoos? For example, if I do you make Chinese dragon on my body, how do they relate to this? How they relate this? Yes, to the tattoos. Actually, it's not a question of law. I mean, he asks, what do Chinese people think about tattoos? A tattoo? You mean is the it, tattoo on, the, on, on, yes. on your leg? Is it prohibited or um, how? It's not prohibited, but uh, you know, it's different. You know, I think my country, China, changed too quickly. Uh, if a country changes too quickly, that means people are different. The young people will think it's cool, it's very perfect, it's just what I need. But the old people will say it's not a good man. The old people think so. Because I know what Japan is a very difficult situation. Uh, 
among also young people because because of Yakuza, you know, Yakuza have tattoos and you know, people think that if young people or another person have tattoos, it's way to go with Yakuza. I mean, Japanese Mafia. Bandits. Mafia, yeah. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, in China, the is, tattoo is not symbol for mafia. It's not. It's not related from each other. But just a uh, problem between between the young people and the old people. The young people think it's cool, but old people think it's not good. Okay. It's the only problem. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, maybe of origin are uh, wars and advocates. Uh, work and uh, public speech in Chinese court. Public speech in Chinese court? No, and to work in China, in China, for a law and advocates, mainly work in China. Asks mm. if it's possible for international lawyers and international uh, jurisprudence to work in China. International jurisprudence? Yeah, uh, international judges or international lawyers to work in China. Of as, course. As lawyers. Of course. Yes. Because uh, and they, and they can uh, enter court, they can just speak in court. Speak in court? Yes. I, I don't understand. I mean, uh, if they can participate in maybe some international organization? Yes, lawsuits. Yeah. Da. Yeah. And do they have any? Uh, do they need any permission to do that to work in China as lawyers? Ah, uh, of course. As a lawyer, there is a la lots of prohibition. Um, I, I, I remember in China, uh, the foreigner cannot participate the uh, national judicial exam. Mm -hmm. And in China, if you want to be a lawyer, you must pass this examination. But it's not a problem, because nowadays, uh, there are more and more law firm merger in, in China and also in USA. You know, in China, we have so nowadays several uh, very large manga law firm. They also have so many branches in different countries. If you want to work in China as a lawyer, you'd better use this chance. I mean, enter the, 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 the large Chinese law firm. They, give, they will give you a chance to go to China as a lawyer. Прежде всего, с одной стороны, нужно любому иностранцу нужно получить разрешение на работу. То есть это получается отдельно, как для любого, независимо от профессии. Да? Другой вопрос, что чтобы работать с юристом в китайской компании, то и сами китайцы в том числе, они должны сдать общий государственный экзамен. Раньше для иностранцев это было запрещено, сейчас уже нет. Но на самом деле все проще, если работать в какой-то международной компании, потому что их сейчас огромное количество, там ничего этого не требуется, то есть вы получаете просто разрешение на работу, как for instance, this large two firms, you, you may research some information about them. Maybe they have also a branch in Russia. King Wu and have Dentons. The same in Russia. What? What? We don't have the same in Russia. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's two Chinese, the two Chinese law firms. No, company, da, которые, скажем, вот в качестве примера. These are the two biggest Chinese law firms. Mm. They have several thousands of law firms. Это два самых крупнейших юридических агентства в Китае. Uh, are they only Chinese or uh, international? This, these two biggest Chinese law firms, they have different branches in all uh, worldwide. They recently came out last year, mm -hmm. hey, 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 purchased uh, English old law firm mm -hmm. in England. Are they Chinese, but in these two agents, they have representatives in different countries. In particular, the uh, company uh, King Wood, King Wood, King Wu, Dentons and Dentons. It's too long. They bought, for example, a filial of one of the It's a Chinese company, but they are now spreading out across the world. In Russia, there is no such thing. Yes, please. I have a question about federal law. Do you understand that in your country, women have more rights than men? About Okay, so her, uh, her question was about your example about this uh, contract between contract? men and women. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, is it uh, about that women have more rights than men? Wow, yeah, of course. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 ladies and gentlemen, for I must example, take it plain. Uh, yeah. yeah, for example, if uh, you speak, if man has had an affair with another woman, uh, women, his wife, he, she got uh, money and the child. Yeah. And if a wife committed mm. this, 
Uh, usually, this contract is uh, one way, mm -hmm. not not double way. Mm -hmm. It's one way contract. That means only the men had this problem. Uh, women people said no problem, no this mm -hmm. problem, mm -hmm. uh, because the uh, the wife is really dominated in the family. Mm -hmm. В общем, да, этот договор, он все-таки односторонний получается, потому что в данном случае защищаются именно вот права женщины. И, то есть, как бы, не, не было никаких вот предписаний по поводу того, что делать в обратном случае. Well, I, I must say, maybe it's not so serious, but uh, uh, to avoid some misunderstanding, I must uh, add something. That is, you know, in China, uh, the China is big, and China develops very quickly. That means, uh, even as a Chinese, I don't understand China. Because China is so big, and in different countries, in different provinces, the people have different opinion. I'll give you an example. Um, that is, uh, the Supreme Court in China said, if this is husband, this is wife, if your parents give you a house, if your parents give you a house, this house is your private fortune. This is so said the Supreme Court. This opinion is well, very, very welcomed in East China, the developed region in China. But in Western China, the people said, oh, it's very ugly law. It's very bad law. That means the split, uh, the, the, the split of the family. Mm -hmm. В общем, Китай сейчас развивается очень быстро, и иногда профессор сам чего-то может не понимать, но он приводит пример. Если, скажем, вот смена пар муж и жена, и родители мужа оставили ему дом в качестве вот его личного имущества, да? и, допустим, Верховный суд постановил, да, что вот этот дом, он принадлежит мужу только. И это, это решение, оно может приниматься, допустим, в Восточном Китае. Но в Западном Китае скажут, что этот закон им не нравится, он совершенно не удовлетворяет их, и, соответственно, они поступят по-другому. That means in developed region people said it's okay, and in the undeveloped region in China people said it's not good. Why? Because the unequal of the development. That means some region is very good, some region is not good in economy. So the people has different opinion. People has different opinion. So that's, that's the problem for me as a Chinese. I don't understand the Chinese. Поскольку здесь имеет в виду некоторый такой традиционный аспект, да, что в принципе отношение к разводу в Китае, оно э, сугубо негативное, то есть это обозначает э, раскол в семье, а для китайцев хуже ничего представить вообще нельзя. А, поэтому э, в более развитых восточных регионах, где бы уже более современные понятия, какие-то представления, это будет воспринято скажем, более адекватно, да, в западных регионах, которые более глубокие, континентальные, да, где уровень развития значительно ниже по всех сферах, да, этот закон будет воспринят негативно, потому что это идет против вот китайской логики, китайской традиции вообще семейных отношений в целом. And as to your problem, the contract, you mean, does the women have more right? It's also an unanswered question. Because in big cities, in Shanghai, in Peking, usually the women have more right in the family. Because the, the men said, oh, I cannot fight with my wife. I'm, I, I should work hard outside and listen to my wife. In the big cities, usually people think so. But in, in the country, especially in the undeveloped, undeveloped region in Western China, the men usually has more right in the family. They, 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 uh, the wife in some region, in some country, uh, the, the wife listened to the, to the husband. It's happened, but the tendency, you, you can see the tendency. In China, people, more and more people go to city, big city. So I think in the future, uh, the women must have more right, generally speaking. Uh, we have uh, the time's limit, so the last question maybe. Okay. Последний вопрос, пожалуйста, хорошо? your opinion about uh, that the Chinese government, they block uh, Google, YouTube, and other websites from Russia? It's not bad. Uh, it's, it's very bad. You think it's bad? I think it's bad. Uh, because, you know, um, 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 as a scholar, it, as a Chinese scholar, we really need Google. Um, because it's very important for us to research some new literature. So because we, we, the Google is blocked, we think it's, uh, ah, you, can, you cannot, 
camera this part, but I, I must say it's a very stupid idea. Um, it's not good. It's not good. I must see, but uh, it happened. Maybe. Uh, but people recently people said Google will return to China. Pe recently people said. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm I'm happy for it. You think it's real? Um, I don't know. I, we can we can wait. Okay. Ну, в общем, да, все-таки этот закон не очень хороший, поскольку он, в принципе, мешает в первую очередь ученым, да, мешает международному сотрудничеству, потому что все-таки иногда требуется воспользоваться тем же Google или YouTube, чтобы найти какую-то информацию, да, которая может быть заблокирована и недоступна на территории Китая. Поэтому этот закон, он все-таки, скажем так, не очень хороший, да, но в последнее время ведутся разговоры о том, что, возможно, по крайней мере, Google вернется в Китай, но случится это или нет, мы, в общем-то, увидим. So you are happy you can use Google and your tube. Make the best use of them. I don't know whether your teacher will use your tube or something like that in your lecture, but in the USA I've observed that many professors in the course, they said, okay, we gave you examples. So your tube is over there and people will understand some questions very quickly because there is a video. Потому что, опять же, скажем, в Америке тот же YouTube, он спокойно используется в университете на парах для какой-то демонстрации чего-либо. Ну, это просто делать нагляднее материал. Вот. В Китае, к сожалению, эта вот возможность отсутствует. Make the best use of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Thank you for your question.